How to Integrate Kaspersky Endpoint Security 11.1 for Linux into Jenkins In this video, we will demonstrate how Kaspersky Hybrid Cloud Security supports the continuous integration and continuous delivery CI, CD, concept through the example of Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux and Jenkins. CI, CD is a kind of pipeline that organizes continuous merging of working copies of software code, testing, and deployment to production servers. This concept permits running various tests at each stage to detect and correct errors. Jenkins is a platform where the CI, CD concept is implemented. It supports regular automated builds, which helps quickly identify defects and solve integration problems. When integrated with Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux, Jenkins runs a local Docker container scan task. If Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux is under a policy, local tasks are blocked by default, and you must first adjust the Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux policy to permit running local tasks. To do this, open the Local Tasks section and select Allow User to View and Manage Local Tasks. Jenkins will now be able to start the Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux task. There are several scenarios where Jenkins may need to scan a container. The simplest scenario is to scan a container when it starts. Let's connect to a Jenkins server. We will create a standard project named KESL1. The terms job and project are often used interchangeably in Jenkins. We'll stick to the project term. We are adding the test container image parameter here. You can specify the default value, but this is not required. You will have to enter it prior to starting the project anyway. The Jenkins architecture allows you to run certain projects on the agent server where Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux is installed, instead of installing Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux on the Jenkins master server. The parameter, restrict where this project can be run, allows you to assign a label so that your project runs only on the Jenkins agents that have this label. Now, specify the script to run. We have broken down our script into several parts for better visualization and to make it easier to understand and troubleshoot. In the first part, the script starts a container from a Docker image, finds out its container ID, and writes this value to a file. The name of the image from which the container will be started is passed as the test container image variable. In the second part, the script takes the container ID value from the file and scans this container for threats. There is a condition in the script that if the task detects threats in the container, the project returns failure and finishes. Let's run project KESL1 and specify the ULIS FC test image name as the parameter. Open the log. Here, you can see who started the project, under which account, where the project is running, and the project's workspace. You can see how each line of the script is being executed. You can see that the image has been downloaded, a container has started, we've received the value of container ID, and wrote this value to a file. Then we took the container ID value from the file and started scanning the respective container. The task detected a threat and output the number of detected threats. Since the number of threats is greater than zero, the execution status is failure. Let us run the same project but start a container from another image that does not contain any malicious files. The job completes with the success status. Another scenario of how you can use Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux in Jenkins is to scan a Docker image when it is built from a Docker file in a repository on GitHub. Let's look at how you can automatically run a job when a Docker file is modified in a Git repository. We will need the address of our Jenkins server for this purpose. Let's go to the repository on GitHub and open settings. 
Here, we need to create a webhook. For the payload URL, we'll specify our Jenkins server address and add GitHub webhook to it. For the content type, select JSON format. Now, when we commit code into our repository, a post request in JSON format will be sent to the specified URL and the job will be initiated. Let's create a new project for this purpose and name it KESL2. We will also specify a label to run jobs on the necessary server. Then we will specify where the source code is located, the Git repository and credentials. What is important is the trigger that will run our project. The option, GitHub hook trigger for GITSCM polling, permits using webhooks on GitHub. And finally, our script. The script downloads a Dockerfile and tries to build an image from it, which is then sent to Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux for scanning. Let us save our project. And go back to our Git repository. Let's open the Dockerfile and add another command to it. Commit changes and quickly return to our Jenkins server. You can see that our project KESL2 has already been queued for execution. Open the log. Jenkins server receives information that something has changed and connects to the Git repository via SSH. Then the job gets the path to the Docker file, downloads it and starts building the image layer by layer. In this case, at one of the stages, an archive containing a malicious file is added to the image. Once the image is successfully assembled, it is sent to Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux for scanning. The scan results show that the image contains a malicious object. The project has completed with the success status because in this example, the success condition was to get a correct Dockerfile rather than absence of malicious objects as in the previous scenario. If necessary, you can add another condition to the script as in the first scenario. Let us open the Kaspersky Security Center and run the selection with the latest Kaspersky Endpoint Security for Linux events. You can see all the events about the detected threats that we have seen in the Jenkins logs.